Hello there and welcome back to Stratford Red Devils Talk for another match reaction regarding all things Manchester United and I come to you with not so good news unfortunately Man United lost 3-1 at home to Crystal Palace a very convincing loss for all Man United fans um, around you know I don't think there's any kind of complaints we can have regarding the results but I thought I'd kind of give my initial thoughts on the performance overall so first things first I guess team lineup not really have I don't really have much problem with I don't really have much of an issue. There was um word I suppose to be Aaron Wambasaka was injured prior to kick off or he wasn't as fit as needed. So we had to start with Tim Fosumesa, who I'm not really a fan of, but if the manager decides he prefers him over Dallow, what can you do? Centre back pairing of Lindelof and Maguire, standard procedure, and then Luke Shaw on the left because we've got no other option. Moving into midfield is where it gets a bit tricky because they decided to play essentially a double pivot of McTominay and Paul Pogba with um, Bruno Fernandes playing in front of them and in the front three of Rashford, Martial and Daniel James. Now, my initial force when the lineup was put out was as much as I don't have any complaints with the rotation of the right-hand side, I was still thinking in terms of getting the best out of Daniel James, in terms of making sure that we have a threat on the right-hand side in any way, shape or form, you can't play Timothy Fosumenta. TFM just isn't good enough to play as right-back. He probably isn't good enough to play for my United, point blank. But especially uh, as being a marauding right-back, offering some sort of attack in a 10, offering some sort of support for Daniel James, it makes no sense playing Timothy Fosumenta on that right-hand side. You're much better off playing an, a, an actual right back or if need be dropping Dan James back into the right back position and playing somebody else as a placeholder maybe a matter maybe a, uh, maybe one of our midfielders on the right hand side don't even a big wave it may be so they can complement each other well there I still of the belief that as as bad as Daniel James has been in these previous um you know maybe 10 or so matches ever since the latter half of last season I still think there's a player there I just think we don't really utilize him in the right way I think our coaching staff if anything have really let Daniel James down he really does um owe an explanation in terms of how we've kind of recruited how we put the team together because it's definitely not getting the best out of him so team wise I thought there was already some problems with the selection I thought Solskjaer got it completely wrong with the selection in terms of who he selected. But then I still thought with the players that are on the pitch, we had enough to beat Crystal Palace. But as uh, proven by the ro kind of robust performances of MacArthur and McCarthy in the midfield who completely dominated the centre of the park, um, essentially gave Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes no time on the ball, didn't allow them to breathe, um, were down the necks of players like Scott McTominay, nicking the ball off him and springing counterattacks, Jordan Ayew, um, what's his name Andros Townsend Wilfred Zaha were tearing us apart as well as people like Jeffrey Schlupp on the wings so it was never gonna you know it, it, it always seemed like it was gonna be a tricky game for us and then quite quickly we're down one goal um, which was probably the fault of a Lindelof probably the fault of a Maguire and a short complete backline completely asleep allowed Townsend to come in on a back stick and basically slot it in and then the second goal was a penalty which I don't really have an issue with I think if the new rules deem it, if you flick it into a player's hand when you're running into a box of penalty, so be it. I've got a bit of an issue with the coming off the line thing, but again, decisions, I'm not going to wrangle them too much. And the third goal was basically the icing on the cake, whereas Wilfred Zaha essentially muscled Lindelof off the ball and then, you know, snuck the ball and then smashed the ball in to the near post of David De Gea, completely wrong foot in him and sealed the victory. So all in all, um, positives to take from this probably none apart from Donny van der Beek's goal I think when he come on you definitely saw a lot more um you, you definitely saw whatever complaints people have about Bruno Fernandes Donny van der Beek doesn't has those positives so he moves the ball quickly he doesn't uh always try the Hollywood pass um he moves off the ball really well he pings ones and twos all the time he's always looking for interesting angles he gets into the box as proven by his goal so he definitely looks like a player that is going to cause a lot of um, decision making problems for whoever's in charge whether it's social some of us in, in the future i think he's definitely going to cause a lot of issues in terms of who we go pick because a player like bruno fernandez a marquee signing a player like paul popper certainly have to play if you agree with how players are signed in the modern day football but a player like don't even a big might be the player that actually suits the team better than the actual individuals who might be on paper better than him but apart from Donny van der Beek's performance and the fact that Solskjaer actually made a substitution at the uh, half time, which I don't think he's done in a long time, I'm not too sure. I can't remember the last time Solskjaer has made a positive change at half time. 
um, usually he takes, he waits until the very last minute to make any kind of change on the bench. It might be because he never believed in the bench to begin with prior to Donny van der Beek, but that was pretty encouraging. But apart from that, a pretty lackluster performance. And I guess some really concerning parts is we're, we're, we're out there pursuing players like Jaden Sancho. We're out there pursuing uh, um, other alternatives. We're out there pursuing a, potentially a, uh, a centre forward. But when you look at what the issues are in this team, I think a lot of it has to come down to coaching for sure. I think if you swap the managers around and had, you know, um, Roy Hodgson managing us and Solskjaer managing Crystal Palace, I'm pretty sure we'd probably win with Roy Hodgson. I still think Oli Solskjaer isn't pos- isn't the best coach for United at this current moment in time. He might be the best manager in terms of, you know, the good vibes and putting the arm around people's shoulder. But in terms of getting the most out of players, making them, helping them to develop players like Dan James has regressed since he signed. Um, I'm not sure what he's added to Marshall's game apart from playing him more often. Rashford is basically stalled. McTominay hasn't really jumped, hasn't really um, kind of kicked on. The only player that's really got a benefit as a player from Solskjaer's tenure would probably argue was Brandon Williams and maybe at a stretch Mason Greenwood, who I still think would have come good regardless because, you know, he's just one of those generational talents. So that's the issue there, right? But then I also look at the defence and I think to myself, we spent, what, 80 million on Maguire. We spent a 30 million on Lindelof, another 35 or 40 on, I forgot who, um, on Eric Bailly. We got Luke Shaw, who's never really um, fulfilled his potential. And then we have a two people cement supposedly as our backup right back when Aaron Basaka isn't playing, who people still don't think he's good enough to be an attacker attacking the right back. That's where the issues lie for me. And I think the recruitment has been really weird because you look at somebody like a Harry Maguire, who admittedly I didn't watch that much at Leicester, but it was pretty evident that he was never gonna be Rio Ferdinand, he's never gonna be in the Manny Vidic, he's not quick enough, he's not aggressive enough to beat any of those players. So you do need a defender next to him that's gonna complement um his weaknesses. Um, so they can form a solid partnership and you can't have somebody like a Maguire who's slow on the turn maybe a bit heavy footed doesn't have a good turning circle you can't have him playing alongside someone like a Lindelof who's error prone and also struggles with mobility sometimes when running back to the goal um, especially if we're defending with a high line and then you look at somebody like Aaron Wan Bissaka who wasn't playing don't get me wrong but even a Tim Ferguson Mentor is a good example if you want to play attacking football counter-attacking football in, 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 that, in that regard, why would you play Timmy Fosomenta? He's not really good at attacking. You'd obviously try and go for someone like a Diego Dallo, who I'm sure we've heard um, rumours or word from um, Solskjaer saying that he supposedly doesn't train well and all this sort of stuff, but footballing-wise, he should be able to try and get the best out of these players to um, effectively benefit his style of play or his system of football a lot better. But at this moment, I don't think that's going to be the case. And I guess... From my POV, the way I'm looking at it is that the real issues at United are obviously the owners. The owners have essentially decimated our club. Um, we have rudderless leadership. Ed Woodward's um, tenure at United has been nothing close to a catastrophe. Every manager that he's hired or overseen the appointment of has failed. Play recruitment has been pretty ordinary or diabolical maybe as apart from the signings of Oligon and Solskjaer it's been a complete and utter clusterfuck right he's failed in all manner of ways but his job is never on the line it's always the manager's jobs on the line which is the annoying part of it because if we were able to get rid of an Edward Wood or move him aside from the footballing side of things or just actually remove him completely from the club and get an actual director of football football director in who could actually um, craft the overall vision of the club in terms of how we're going to get back to the top of the Premier League how we're going to be challenging for European honours domestic honours that would go a long way into informing how we then go and select managers how we then go and recruit players but at the moment because we're relying Ed we're relying on the leadership of our managers and our coaching staff to steer the team where need be if that's said manager happens to fail if it doesn't necessarily go their way and they get sacked we have to then restart the entire process again with a whole new manager a whole new backroom team a whole new vision of the club every two to three years and that just isn't a great long-term policy so as much as I can sit here and say I'm Oli out for sure because I still think he's a terrible coach I don't think I, I, I would argue to say that he probably might be the worst manager in the league. Um, I think if he manages any of the teams in the bottom 10, he gets them relegated. I don't think he has anything special about him. The, there's no discernible style of play. I still maintain that people like Stephen Housen will tell you, oh, style of play doesn't matter as long as you've got good players or something along those kind of lines. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think you need some level of coaching. You need some level of direction to get the best out of the players that you have. Also, at least identify the players that you need 
to have in your team to make it make sense because honestly I still look at it and I think to myself if you're going to play counter-attacking football why would you sign Aaron Rambasaka why would you sign Harry Maguire like why would you sign these players it doesn't make any sort of sense Dan James you kind of get because you've got the pace but again if you're going to sign a Dan James and you know his limitations technically or football IQ wise you would get a specialist coach to come in and help him out or you'd sign players that would kind of complement his strength because I think as bad as Daniel James played and he got hooked on the half time I still think he was given a thankless task he was playing in front of Timothy Osimento who's completely ordinary crap as a crap as a crap as anything that we've had maybe even worse than Ashley Young and whenever the ball was sent out to the right hand side the players always knew it was going to come back inwards anyway because Timothy Osimento wasn't going to go anywhere right he can't really take players on he hasn't really got the dribbling ability or the pace to get past anybody so it was a complete waste of time whenever the ball did move out to the right hand side so most of the time um, Daniel James spent just popping the ball back inside and hoping to make some sort of inroads that way so I think Daniel James in front of a really competent and attacking right back uh, uh, alongside a working function midfield would actually be not too bad and I think at the moment if we're saying that the ownership isn't going to change anytime soon, right? We heard rumors of a Middle Eastern group coming in and buying out the Glazers, but they, you know, it never really materialized or nothing was kind of solidified in that regard. And if the current valuation is supposed to be something like four billion, and if Ed Woodward is in, in the untouchable in his job, even though he's failed every single time he's hired a manager, if that's the case, the only thing that we have to demand from the club at the very least is a change of coach. I still think this kind of obsession that some of our fan base have with signings and getting in big players is really, really damaging us in the long term because I honestly believe even with the players that we have now at the moment, even with our holes, right? I still believe we need a new left back. I still been left back to challenge Luke Saw or to at least start in front of him and give him competition. We need a competent centre back. We need a right sided forward and quite possibly a left sided forward, depending on what the case is, and a backup striker from our show when Igalo leaves and a defensive midfielder on top of that. That's five, maybe four four three to five players right right back center back left back um no so yeah right back left back center back defensive midfield and striker that's five players right i still think even on the players we have right now at the moment there is still enough materials and tools there for a competent coach to get the most out of these players I definitely believe it. This team shouldn't be playing counter-attacking football um, most of the time. This team can control games with 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 the ball. This team has the ability to break down uh, low blocks if there are the right combinations selected around the park or the right individuals that complement the team the most. And again, it doesn't matter who it is. If the manager comes in and decides Team for the Most Team for the Most is the best DM that he can play in that system, then let him play. I'm not really worried about the names. I'm just worried about the harmony and what kind of and how people gel and the chemistry on the pitch at the moment I don't see it I don't see what they do in training if anything every time we play I just see individuals trying to make stuff happen especially when we go go down I think if you ever realize watching United whenever we start playing there is obviously some kind of game plan at a foot whether it's getting the ball out wide whether it's switching it for on either flank and then as soon as we go 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 behind we panic and then the better players start to take over the game and start to influence it in their own way that's when you start seeing wayward passes from Mark, from Bruno Fernandes trying to hit the Hollywood balls over the top or switching play Pog Pogba doing the same thing too holding on to the ball too long Martial trying to make things happen doing his little um you know spinning around uh dribbling inside the box trying to cause um an an unforced area from defense but that isn't the best way to actually attack or the best way to break down teams you need it to be a collective effort and at the moment i just don't see that happening maybe it's a coaching thing maybe it's the players of course the players have some level of blame in this situation too but i definitely think part of the reason or most of the reason has to come down to the manager and his lack of coaching ability and i think if he's given more money I don't think it's going to make any change. I don't think you can put Jaden Sancho in that team and suddenly we win that game. I don't think it's fair to Jaden Sancho to bring him into a team like this where he's having to, he's have, he's got the expectation of the entire league or well, the entire fan base on his shoulders. He's having to do, he's having to, uh, what, get double figures and assist, double figures in goals in order to make it a big impact and to change our season. That isn't the right way to go about things. So in future, I guess the only thing I can say for this is complete, I'm definitely Oli out in that regard. I'm definitely Ed Woodward and Glazers out. Um, and I just think at the moment, if we carry on going the way we're going, if we carry on 
not not addressing the obvious holes that we have in our team not addressing the obvious lack of coaching uh, ability world-class coaching ability of our football club we're definitely going to struggle to finish in the top four this season let alone the top five i definitely do think that considering the improvements liverpool have made arsenal have made uh tottenham with the signing of bale um these even tottenham tottenham might not be able to finish in the top four don't get me wrong but they're going to give everyone an issue right tottenham like everton are going to take a lot of points off the bigger clubs so it's definitely going to um um disrupt the season for some of these clubs that are trying to secure top four position i still think the top four will be the same probably the same sort of clubs involved last season but overall then the positions might change um drastically due to the fact that you know there's there are more teams of a what other wolves standard playing in a, in the Premier League now at the moment due to their signings like you know Everton have exponentially exponentially improved with the signings of Alan and Rodriguez alone let alone Decore and all the other people and all the, people like Digne and stuff that they have on their squad and Calvert Lewin is firing on all cylinders so I definitely do think it's squeaky bum time for United but I think immediate concerns would be the manager he's obviously out of his depth he's obviously not good enough to manage at this level no way shape and form no one can tell me any different about that but it's also concerning that the players that have, we have at the moment just don't seem to suit any style of play right whether it's counter-attacking they don't really have what it takes whether it's possession base the players that are selected have what it takes and the players out of the team should definitely feel a bit aggrieved by you know getting dropped by seeing some of these players are playing at the moment so um i'm not enthusiastic really going forward i think we're going to be in for a long 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 season if no changes are made but yeah let me know what your thoughts are do you think it's only going socials fault is it the fault of the ball is it the fault of the players let me know down below in the comments for now take care peace